HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Consider markup language as instructions used to tell the browser how to display content on a web page. HTML is written in the form of HTML elements, consisting of tags enclosed in angle brackets or carrots. HTML tags generally come in pairs, consisting of an opening tag and a closing tag. Consider the opening and closing tags as bookends that nest the content that is displayed. For example, the title of an article on a web page is nested in a heading tag, such as H1, the stock market crashes, close H1. By default, the browser will present this text in 24-point bold. Empty elements are tags that do not nest any content. For example, the break tag is used to create a line break and does not present content. In order to close an empty tag, a forward slash trails the markup within its brackets. The initial tag in an HTML document and the only tag that does not require a corresponding closing tag or a trailing forward slash is the doc type. Doc type stands for document type. The doc type tells the browser what version of HTML the page is using. With each new version of HTML, new features are introduced. For example, HTML2 did not support tables for layout. The purpose of the doc type is to have pages look and function correctly in the web browser. If the doc type is declared and it is valid, the browser will run in a standards compliant mode, in which HTML and CSS are treated as they are intended. If a document does not declare the doc type, or the doc type is incorrect, the browser will run in quirk mode, and will treat the HTML and CSS in an outdated mode that is in a past version of the browser that allowed for poor markup and errors. The doc type also facilitates validation. There are freely available validating tools on the web, such as the W3C Markup Validation Service, that will flag errors in the markup based on the doc type that is declared. If there is a depreciated tag or element in a page that declares strict markup, the validator will notify you. Let's write a basic HTML page that presents a title, image, and text. The first line is the HTML5 doc type that puts the browser in standard mode. Next is the HTML tag. All the content of this page should be nested within the opening and closing HTML tags. Tags may commonly have attributes. For example, if I'm creating a page that is in English, I may add the language attribute or L-A-N-G, lang, to tell the browser that this page is in English. Attributes have a name and value pairing. In this example, the term lang is the name of the attribute and its value is E-N for English. Next is the head tag. This is an area used to describe the page. Search engines use information within the head tags such as the title and meta tags to properly index a page. The only information displayed in the browser from the head area is the title that will be displayed in the browser's title bar. Meta tags are a means to provide context. They are information about the page. Three common uses of the meta tag are to declare the character set or encoding of the page. UTF-8 is a common value as it supports every character in a vast number of languages. A second common use of the meta tag is to provide a description for the page. And the third common use is to associate keywords or terms within the page. The description and keywords will be used by search engines when indexing the page. Multiple keywords or terms are separated by commas. Following the closing of the head area is the opening body tag. 
Within the body tag is the content that is actually presented on the page through the browser window. I will begin the content with a heading followed by an image that is followed with a paragraph. The heading tag I will use is H1, as there are by default up to six heading tags. By default, H1 presents the nested text as 24 point bold. This is the largest size. H2 through H6 will present text in descending size. The image tag allows you to embed an image by writing a link to an image. I've saved an image in a folder titled IMG that is saved in the same folder as the HTML page that I am working on. Therefore, I will direct the browser to the IMG folder and in the IMG folder call the image that I have requested image01.jpg. The browser will then display the image that I have linked to using the source attribute, that is SRC. Since the image is linked and there is no content to format, the IMG tag is an empty tag. I close it by adding a space and forward slash following the value of the source attribute. I follow the image with a paragraph using the P tag. Once I have added a paragraph, I will close the paragraph tag, close the body tag, and close the HTML tag. If I view my HTML page in a browser, this is what is displayed. Of course, the beauty of HTML and the web is the ability to link content. So I will add a link within my paragraph to a more detailed story on the topic. To do so, I use the anchor tag, that is simply an A, and include the href attribute. href stands for hyper-reference, and the value of this hyper-reference is going to be an external link. Unlike the image that I saved to my own folder, the external link is linking to a document that is not on my server. Therefore, I must include the entire URL, beginning with the HTTP that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. I include the entire URL as the value for the href attribute. The last thing that I'd like to cover in this tutorial is file naming conventions. The titles of files that will be presented on the web should begin with a lowercase alphabetical character. The file name cannot contain spaces, and the file name must include the appropriate extension, such as .html or .jpg, .gif, .png, .mp3, .mp4, etc. For file names consisting of multiple words, it is common for the words following the initial word to be capitalized, or you may use the underscore to signify a space. Finally, the name of the file that is meant to be presented initially upon entering a URL or subdirectory should be titled index.html. Servers are commonly set to serve the index file by default.